They're coming up. Did you hear me? He's coming up. He's on his way down. The answer is no. Mr. Soze will be most upset. Listen, you cocksucker, there is no Kaiser Soze. You mention his name again, I'll kill you right now. Strange threat, Mr. Keaton. I can only assume that you've come here to kill me anyway. And we know that you can get to us. But now you know that we can get to you. I'm giving you one last chance to call this off. Mr. So my employer has made up his mind. He does not change it. Neither do we. You got the fence there. But you won't be able to get all of us, not before one of us gets through to you. I believe you, Mr. McManus. I most sincerely do. You would not have been chosen where you're not so suitable. But I cannot make this decision. Whatever you threaten me with is ludicrous in comparison to what will be done to me if I do not carry out my orders in full. I'm the guy that's gonna get you. I just wanted you to know that. I'm so sorry, Mr. McManus. I implore you, Mr. Keaton, believe me. Mr. Soze is very real and very determined. We'll see. Before you do me in, Mr. McManus, you will let me finish my business with Miss Finneran first, won't you? What did you say? Edie Finneran. She's upstairs in my office for an extradition deposition. I requested she be put on the case personally. She flew in yesterday. No matter. Kill away, Mr. McManus. You're lying. Am I? Miss Finland's escort, while she's here in Los Angeles, never leaves her side for a moment. I thought you'd be glad to know she's in good hands. Now get some rest. The boat will be ready for you on Friday. If I see you or any of your friends before then, Miss Finneran will find herself the victim of a most gruesome violation before she dies, as indeed will your father, Mr. Hockney, and your uncle Randall in Arizona, Mr. Kint. I might only castrate Mr. McManus's nephew, David. I'll make myself clear. He will take care of the two bodies downstairs. We'll add them to the cost of Mr. Fenster. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> 